So you're listening to the Business Fitness Podcast. I'm Paddy Richards. And I'm Stephen Rooney. And over the next 24 episodes, we're going to be talking about how to build a strong company. Um, the fitness is an analogy of, you know, your business, how to build it strong, how to grow, how to nourish, how to develop, and how to have the company you want to have in the next five years. Um, we're going to be covering many topics. And um, along the way, we're going to have some really exciting guests. So, yeah. And on some platforms, we'll also be... Naked. Naked. So, we're starting a podcast. What's that about? <laughs> so we had the idea to start a podcast for something different because we have um, taken our business from just me and you to yep. a team of 15 people plus ourselves and we often come across other small business owners who are struggling with moving the business forward coming up with ideas a lot of the challenges that we would have encountered and we you know we find ourselves giving a bit of advice here and there yeah. wishing you could do more yeah wishing you could give more time or get more involved but you always have to kind of keep your eye on your own business and it's very easy to get frustrated running a small business. You've got a lot of different hats to wear. You're the business owner. You're yeah. You run the risk of going into a rut as well. Like you, there's yeah. a lot of guys out there that we know that just have plateaued and they've got so much potential to grow, but yeah. they just don't know what way to go, how to yeah. do it. You know. Yeah. We've been there. Yeah. So we'll introduce ourselves. So 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 you're Stephen Rooney and you're Paddy Richards. Yes, I am. Little spoiler, yeah, it's 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 about six o'clock in the morning on a Sunday here. <laughs> we come in because we're actually in our premises. Yeah, in, in our gym. We have a gym downstairs and we, we come into the premises. Yeah. And there's nobody here and Paddy disclosed that he was up very late last night, whereas I was in bed early, taking this much more seriously than Paddy. Oh, I took this pretty seriously. <laughs> but in fairness, Paddy did all the setup here, all the sound and all the stuff. So this is all very new to us. Absolutely. So this episode could be quite rough, quite vague, quite broad. It's really an introduction to what we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, we have a plan to do 24 episodes over a year. Yeah, the next 12 months. Yeah. 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 So we're going to cover a lot of different subjects. We're going to cover... What are those subjects about, Stevie? <gasps> Tell I'm me more. I'm so happy you asked me. <laughs> so we're going to cover... We'll begin into that now? Yeah. Okay. A little, sure, well, yeah. Do you know what? Why don't we give a little bit more about our own story? Yeah. And then we'll get into what we're going to be covering. Um, yeah, that sounds about good. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. So. Okay. It was 2009. It was in the height of a recession. Height of the recession. And we had... In a world gone mad. <laughs> you were, you were uh, my employer. At yes, the time, I was. And... Jesus. Uh, bollocks, I could say, but... We wouldn't say words like Did that. Did we let people know there will be profanities in this? There may be profanities on this. This is an 18s and over yeah. podcast. We were getting on good. We were having, you know, good business. And we were helping each other. First sight, it was it was for me anyway. You had uh, a lot going on. It was a completely different industry than what we were used yeah. to. Recession came. Banks pulled the overdraft. Couple pulled of, the plug. A couple of, couple of creditors went and hit the wall. And mm. within a week, the business was gone from that fully functioning to... Gone, zip, gone, empty. 35 staff gone, everything S gone. Yeah. So that was a rough place for you. Mm -hmm. I was on the sidelines. I didn't own the business. I wasn't a shareholder. No. But I was observe, observed the whole thing and I went to the creditors meeting with you. Yeah, I remember that. I remember sitting over yeah. there, but I remember a conversation that we had maybe three or four weeks beforehand and we yeah. were in that small office and we were like, if this goes, you know, to the wall, me and you should do something. Yeah. <laughs> we should start a business. And you were like, okay, this sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, because at the time, I think we were the only two that actually gave a shit. And yeah, I think, so when you were sitting over on the chair and I was in that creditors meeting and I was looking at going, yeah, we're starting something cool. This, once I get this over with, we're doing something deadly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, don't, that's that's probably the, the way we were thinking at yeah, the time. Yeah. Mm. I always wanted to set up a business. It was always my ambition. Um I yeah. went to college to do business, thinking that you'd rock out of college and ready to go. You know, you just executive sign up with what I call it, and it, customers will fall out of the sky. <laughs> and you, you know, is that what they teach in college? Well, it's, I suppose they don't teach you anything along. They don't. You know, it's very broad what you do mm. in, in in a business degree. You, you learn about taxation. You learn financial services. You mm. learn 
management, but it's very theoretical and yeah. often very hard to think of how you're going to apply that in the real world. So okay. when you get out there as an entrepreneur, it's completely it's different. It's a whole different bag. And that's part of why we're doing this, because there is no course, there is no college for a small business owner. No. Nobody teaches you how to sell what you're doing properly. Nobody teaches you how to log on to Ross and submit your tax returns and how it all works. Nobody you know? teaches you how to walk into a building and do a presentation or talk to a stranger and trying to sell them something that they didn't want to buy that day yeah. or all these different things. Yeah. Nobody teaches you how to hire somebody yeah. and assess their their sanity i suppose because the amount of people that will you know we we all know when we go into pl into places you know we've all done interviews where we've gone in and spun a yarn here and there we've all played basketball in our hobbies and did swimming yeah exactly yeah uh, i walk every day and i read yes. and you know all that stuff yeah of course no. i'm a team player yeah on the football team that we all captain, the guy, all captain. That stuff, yeah. three leagues three seasons in a row yeah so as the business owner <laughs> over the years you're going to hire people and you're only going to be on the receiving end of that yeah. people will tell you anything so how do you know that how do you assess that yeah only through experience you know, so There's so many things you're going to learn as a business owner yeah. along the way yeah so we're going to try and share some of that experience For with sure. other, other business owners who's this podcast designed to help who's the well, target glad, audience glad you asked Stephen. <laughs> um it's, my it's <laughs> so this is going to be for startups small business startups with very zero capital i suppose um small businesses that are somewhat established but to find themselves in a rut i'd say business owners that um are kind of plateaued a little bit that feel that they're working too much of their time in the business instead of working on the business and helping them to grow that company a bit more um anybody else um sole traders sole partnerships traders, partnerships yeah, yeah absolutely anybody yeah. who has the ambition to grow their business and wants entrepreneurs to, yeah entrepreneurs you know. at a startup basis yeah as an entrepreneur we're all very much it's, it's impossible to avoid as as you start you are the hr department you are sales you are marketing customer you are service, purchasing yeah. customer service mm. your logistics finances yeah you know in a lot of ways and a lot of you know being being the, the bookkeeper and the financial controller and on, all that stuff it's it takes up a lot of time it takes yeah. up a lot of learning and a lot of energy and it's very easy to get wrong and you can make so many mistakes so as the business owner you become uh, many hats you're yeah, wearing many hats wearing many hats yeah you know yeah yeah it can be exhausting so it's really break it up uh, going in today i'm going to do you know marketing and tomorrow i'm going to try and do catch up on all the mm. accounts and i'm going to enter all these invoices and all that stuff and while that's going on you're getting emails coming in you're trying to follow up on something that you, you know you knew yesterday that this person actually called them back at 12 o'clock fit that in there yeah the phone rings in 2009 we had a fax machine so, <laughs> you know <laughs> We used to get orders coming in, especially from certain industries like pharmacies used to always fax in their orders. Fax in the orders. We used to just sit there and press the button to make sure oh, it was still working. Geez, so the fax is machine starts broken? going, we'd run over run to over. it. <laughs> check what it is, look. Do you remember we used to check the phone system at the start to see, is yeah. this working? Mm -hmm. Because it just, nobody's ringing. I thought ringing people would there, ring. Yeah. Yeah. No, it doesn't work that way. You doesn't have to make work. the calls. Yeah. The calls don't come yeah, to you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's so much to do at the start. To get back to our start, we had literally no money. No, we didn't. No. You were in trouble with the with the other business. You were personally liable for some of the debts. I think you had about twenty five grand. You had to pull out of pull out of your arse and get back to them. So mm. when we were saying, "What are we going to do for money?" It was clear that neither of us had didn't have a penny. Didn't have a penny. So mm. um, we had two laptops. Shh, don't tell anybody. We might have took them. We might have took them. We didn't. I think know. we borrowed them and they didn't ask for them back. But that's so, okay. Yeah. So we had some some two dodgy debts. <coughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah. Um, and two phones. We didn't have. Did we have phones? We did. We have phones. we we got phones. I think we got signed up to Vodafone, and we yeah. got two phones. That was like you know massive overhead. How massive are we going to pay this? How are we going to pay this? How are we going to pay the rent? Yeah. You know what I mean? And <laughs> we said, let's get an office somewhere in between the two yeah. of us. Yeah. And I think we, we were in Park West. We, did, we got a very cheap office because of the recession. Offices were everywhere. We were paying four hundred euros a month. Will we give them a plug? Uh, no, okay. and uh, <laughs> there was no windows, and I remember my my mom coming in, you know, being the mammy that she is, because um, she was, you know, she's business minded. She was coming in, she yep. wanted to see what we were doing. Legends. She wanted to help us out. Yeah. So she's like, Stephen, where's the fire exits? And I was like, didn't, didn't even think of that. <laughs> what this, are you talking about? <laughs> I know, but it's, we're going to burn if it happens. It's, it's, mm. You know, we, we we hadn't got all that in. in uh, 
in mind at the time. We just wanted somewhere. Yeah. And it worked. It was great. Yeah, did you? We had a little little room, two of us, two desks. No money. No clue what we were doing. No money, and but a we very had, steep bending curve. And about forty tins of sardines. For, and some cherry tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah. And we lived off them for a good little special year, I'd say. Yeah, I think so, yeah. So how did we find business? How did we start the wheels turning with no money and well, that was tough back then because we were making sales calls. We were hammering the phones out of it because there was nothing else to do at that stage. Yeah, we had the yellow pages, I think. We needed the yellow pages yeah. and uh, aircom.net. Yeah. And I think we were just ringing everybody we could. And yeah. I, we were getting quotes. We, we didn't know what we were selling. Yeah. We were learning very quickly. We didn't, we'd never been in the industry no, before. We didn't no. know what the product was. We, yeah. Only because it was survival at that stage. I yeah. mean, people were, I mean, how many businesses a week were going to the wall? Yeah. You know? So we're making calls and we're getting opportunities to quote, getting excited at the fact that we're getting opportunities to quote. And then we ring two weeks later and we're trying to follow up on that quote. Next fall, the phone's cut off, disconnected. You know, they've gone to the wall. People were going. People were going bang. Yeah, it yeah. was crazy, you know. We were running out of oxygen mm -hmm. fast, so we really had to up our game. We didn't know our products. No. We, we had no pitch. No. We didn't know the price of anything. It was, I would have classed that as wartime in business yeah. because there was, the rules were going out the window. We had no target customer. No target customer. We didn't know what we were doing. We were just selling on price, really, weren't we? <laughs> yeah. We were, we were trying to over-service and under-price. Yeah. That's what we were trying to do, and that yeah. never works. Yeah. Which we learned it took a while, though. It did, yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about that in another, we another episode. We will. We'll get yeah, to that. That's one sure. of the most important yeah. things, really, you know. But fast forward. Fast forward. Where are we now? Well, now we're in a building that we own. Mm -hmm. We bought um, two years ago, was it? Yeah. Well done, by the way. Yeah. So, well done to you, too. <laughs> Um, we so have how many staff? We have 15 staff plus ourselves. So right. we count ourselves, that's 17. Seven we're on the payroll that's like not everybody bad. else, right? That's not bad. We have a department for each person has their own departments and there's multiple people in each department. Mm -hmm. So we've got, we've departmentalized the business. The business. And we're in a situation now where me and you, you and I, I should say. Yes. We're not needed here on a day-to-day -day basis for anything urgent. Urgent. And that is the model that we're going to try and help others get to. Articulate. Articulate. Okay, mm. so you should not be the most important person in your business. Definitely not. You should not be needed day to day. Don't be the smartest person in the room. No. Build a strong team. Exactly. And getting to that is obviously a long process. Mm. But once you determine, you know, in year two, three, four, whatever, this is where we're going. This is where we need to be. Yeah. Well, then you start taking the steps you need to get there. Mm -hmm. Until you've decided, what does this need to look like in a couple of years? Mm -hmm. You won't be able to get there. You see, I think that's the problem. I think a lot of people don't paint that picture. Yeah. Or they don't realize what's involved after that picture is painted, if they do get that point, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, there's so many pitfalls along the way. Yeah. So many things that can go wrong. So it's important to... It's like being out at sea with no navigation. Nav no maps. You don't yeah. know where you're going. Yeah. So... You constantly have to stop and assess and yeah. say, is this working? And yeah. I don't think that's uh, people getting back to people working in the business, not on the business. They're not getting a chance to do the assessment. So they don't know where they're going. Because you get tied yeah. down, you get yeah. flat out with calls, emails, mm. doing all your bookkeeping, yeah. every, all that stuff. It's day to day and you can be absolutely burnt out at the end of the day where somebody For says, sure. what's the plan here? And you're like, the plan is to show up tomorrow and keep and, this thing and going. keep going yeah. and do it again. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you end up doing the same thing over and over. Mm. So, like, some through some of our conversations with other people, one of the obstacles that they would face is, I can't afford to hire somebody. Mm. So, th that's nearly a mindset. But realistically, they can't afford to hire somebody. Absolutely. And we were in that boat. We were in that boat, We yeah. didn't hire until year four, I think. Three, year three. We didn't pay anybody a wage. And even when we did then, it was such a big step. And year four, I think it was. Yeah. We had to... We had to sacrifice some of our own salary. Yeah. Stop looking. Like, we had, obviously, very little salary for a long time. Yeah, but we scaled that back even further just we to did. get somebody in. <clears throat> it's worth mentioning that we also got a lot of government support in year one and two. We did. We yeah. got on the... Which was good. We got on know. the back-to-work scheme. Yeah, and yeah. credit to the government because they get a lot of slack. Mm. We got massive support at the time. Back-to-work enterprise allowance I got for two years. I got it for two years, yeah. Yeah, we got some grants. We got... Did we get grants? Yeah, we got some small grants um true true the same okay yeah yeah and you also got something else that i wasn't getting i think i was getting some mortgage support for yeah. six months <clears throat> while i was out of work yeah yeah 
because I think your wife wasn't working at the time. No. And mine was. I wasn't. Anya, I think at the time we we had at that stage we had we had four kids. Anya was a full time man. Yeah. Working harder than I was, you know, trying to keep it all together. So you literally had no income when the, no the other business went bang. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So it was really. What's what's the term? It's a uh, cut the, you know, when you cut the. Rice. Oh, you cut your. Well, cut your cloth to suit your measure? Mm, maybe. No, that's not the one. Cut the cord? Cut the ropes. Oh, for what? You know, the ships uh, sail into the, into the island and yeah. you get off and you embark on this new island. Cut the, cut the boat. No, edit this. Cut this the is getting cut out. This is what, I'd say that's what's happening. <laughs> this is getting cut out. You cut the ropes and the ships head off and then you have no choice but to survive. Never had that one before, but no. okay. No. Okay. That's okay. So imagine you land on this deserted island. What's the deserted ship. island? It's called Dublin. And Dublin. And you have to survive. Okay. If you cut the cords, cut the ropes, your ships head off. You're on the deserted island. It's survive or die. So we Sur- were... Well, it was survival time. It was survival yeah, time. Yeah, it was survival yeah. time, yeah. So um, at the time, we did other things to make money and, and, and to keep to keep income coming in. You know, there yeah. was part-time jobs, evening work, weekend work. Yep. And that's something that a lot of small business owners will have to do at the start, sole traders, because you've no income for a long time. No. So it's still the hustle. Start, yeah, it's called the hustle. And, the hustle. you know, we did do a lot of hustling. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think you did more than I did. I mean, I remember you were playing, you were leaving the office and you were going home and then going straight into town. You were playing maybe two or three gigs a night. Yeah. Getting some, home at like sometimes. one in the morning. Yeah. yeah three or four <clears> nights a week. You were doing a lot of side gigs as well, trying to make well, money come in. Guitar lessons. Guitar lessons. For kids. And, and you're not even that good on guitar. Like, it's actually terrible on guitar. You've seen right? me play. I mean, you're not good. I really, really spoofed them guitar lessons. Yes, you and did. I was lucky that the kids were only five and six years they'd be old. Because <laughs> they'd be looking and for money. And their mommies and daddies <laughs> didn't really play guitar either. So they were, none of them were listening. And I mm. remember I we went to one house and this guy, he was you know, getting off, t- off topic here, but the daddy knew how to play guitar. Oh, no. Better than me. And I was, okay. Okay, you're in trouble now. G, 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 so they were going to learn how to hold the plectrum. Right. And he just said, thanks for that. Here's your 20, Don't ever come 20 back. quid. Yeah. I'll let you know if I need any more lessons for my little <laughs> man. I was like, okay. <laughs> he has seen through me. Yeah. But yeah. that is part of the hustle. You just, yeah, you, just know, hustle, you, yeah. you do what you have to do. Yeah. And, you know, it got us to where we are. So. Oh, for sure, yeah. Let's let's move on a little bit, right? Yeah. Let's go. What are we going to be covering over the next year with our 24 episodes, right? So what are we going to be covering over the next 24 yeah. episodes, Stephen. Okay, thank you for asking. So, <laughs> just going to skate over them because each one's going to be yeah. explored in each episode, right? So, we've got sales, right? Sales is the blood of the business, right? The food, right? So, yeah. if we did, we're calling this the Business Fitness Podcast, right? Why are we calling it the Business Fitness Podcast, Stephen? Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Put down the dumbbell. Okay. <laughs> so you have to be fit and strong in business, Jesus. right? So yeah. the, the business, let's look at the analogy of the business as a human body. It's a living organism, right? That's right, yeah. So sales is the food. Mm-hmm. Okay, it starts with sales. If you don't feed the business... The business dies. Absolutely. So sales is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to touch on that. I think probably episode one or two, we're going to kick into sales because you can't start anywhere else. No. And a lot of small business owners, sole traders, people who haven't done sales before will say, I'm not a salesperson. I can't sell it. Yeah, absolutely. And I was one of them. I'm an introvert naturally. And I believed that as an introvert, you can't be the salesperson. I'm terrified, right? So. I experienced extreme anxiety and still do it at times when it comes to selling the business, selling myself, yep. telling the story, getting in front of somebody. If there's more than two or three people in the room, I'm gone. I'm like, what is this? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you have much more experience in sales than I did. Yeah. So you did a lot of that at the start. Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> I would have learned a lot from your sales. Mm-hmm. And then I moved into audiobooks and I got a lot of yeah really sales specific audio books which were hard to listen to at times yeah and, and you have to face a lot of you know you have to face yourself and realize that this is what has to happen mm-hmm. but after a while you realize that sales is just being yourself sales is one person talking to another person be authentic be authentic so yeah there's, so there's a whole world that we're going to talk about in sales Massively, right? yeah. the point is that sales is not as scary as people think it is no 
and it's not it's, it's priority number one in any business yeah. though if you mm. don't have sales you, you don't have customers you don't have a business and anybody can sell anybody all can you sell. need to do is believe in what you're doing 100 believe in your business yeah and be real be who you are yeah you know be vulnerable be authentic be honest okay so we're also going to cover defining your target customer massive importance right oh that is a huge everybody is not your customer we did we did fall down that pit hole at the start where we went out and we tried to sell to everybody we've just yeah, covered not that. everybody's a customer right. and there's lots of reasons for that so we'll cover them in in a future episode yeah refining your pitch so sales is hard because you don't know what to say sales is hard because you get stuck so how do you refine your pitch and yep. how do you differentiate yourself how do you give the prospect customer yeah a good reason a compelling reason a compelling reason to buy from you to buy from you yeah but to stay with you depending yeah. on what you're buying yeah. what you're selling yeah. exactly it's it's so compelling is the is you should the only have to want there. to pitch that person once basically yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah and there's lots of easy tricks that you can do and once you master that you can grow your business mm. indefinitely 100 percent. because your yeah. pitch will evolve from that you know you get the foundations of that marketing okay so sales and marketing similar topics marketing yeah is a way of getting your customers in you can market through lots of different platforms you know digital marketing yeah. is the big the, the big, big way the forward moment, yeah um but get your brand out there yeah there's lots of elements to marketing we're yeah. going to discuss that in an episode mm -hmm. there's an argument you know some businesses will only do you know digital marketing and will survive and get customers through that oh yeah they'll tell you old <laughs> old way of sales is dead yeah you know cold calling is dead. dead all that stuff but yeah Cold calling will never be dead. Never be dead. Marketing no. is great. We yeah. do we do you know plenty of marketing. We Anyone who says that can't sell. That's that's my opinion. That on is it. because they're afraid to it's sell. It's the path of least resistance. You Absolutely. know what I'll do? I'll just pump a lot of money into pump them money into this into and Google. let people come to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you end up, yeah. So, but there is lots of and then they'll preach about it. So many positives to marketing. You know, Massively, right? yeah. So we're going to cover all that. Yeah. Um. Slightly off topic, off. It's not. It's not one of the organisms of the business. The way you know, marketing, sales, HR, finance, IT. Is, yeah. They're all different organisms of the business. The mm -hmm. way we, with the analogy of the the business fitness. For sure. Yeah. But the business owner, is the is the brain is the manager right mm -hmm. of the business Absolutely. and mental health of the business owner is something that we don't hear a whole lot of talked about. But we're going to get into that. Oh, um, it's a massive topic. There's a lot of pressure. Yeah. You know, you, you have so many different things going on. Yeah. Sometimes you get very, very dark. Yeah, dark times. And yeah. so many times, it, every business owner at some point thinks, I'm packing this in. Oh, I'm wrapping uh, up I've this taught business, that about it you know? uh, 50 times at least. Yeah, it, it happens all the time. You know? Last year. Yeah. <laughs> no. Hopefully, you know, and yeah. definitely actually, as we progress, yeah, it gets a lot better. If you put the right systems in place, mm -hmm. if you hire the right team, if you can delegate, if yeah. you start to take the pressures off yourself, when you get time back, because I know I burnt out maybe year seven or eight, and really only by passing back to handing down jobs yeah. and going, I don't, I don't need to know. It's funny you said that actually, because I would have put myself at about year six. Yeah, yeah, the burnout started to happen big time. Yeah, yeah. So you have to put systems in place to to avoid. Yeah, but I think you also need to be able to talk about the fact that there is mental health issues for business owners. And I think it's at different stages. I mean, even at the start, you, you know, you could, if doubt creeps in, in your mind when it's not working for you, because it's not an easy ride. Yeah. Like, it's definitely not an easy ride. And then once you have staff and like, you know, you're kind of feeling the, the burden and the responsibility of paying their wages or even the struggles of just keeping that business going. Um, and then when you're talking to guys, I don't know how many times I've spoken to guys and it's like, how, how are we getting on? grand yeah things are brilliant and then you keep chatting and you realize no things aren't brilliant you know yeah. they're they're facing a lot of struggles but they just don't want to say the word that you know they're depressed after mind or they're yeah. struggling or they've had some really you know i could just feel like packing it all in yeah and the more you talk about it then the more they kind of realize that you're not alone here that this is a very common yeah. thing and i think uh, the more we'll talk about it in that episode i think people realize that like this is more common than people think yeah Financial pressure is so extreme oh. when you're the only one <clears throat> Big time. responsible. Yeah. You know, you get and a the bill. Wages in, have to be there. Yeah. Revenue bill comes in, gives you a surprise. <laughs> you know? How much? <laughs> the amount of times that our cash flow went yeah. down to zero. Oh yeah. And we wondered, you know, we've got three days to get money in here. Yeah. Or we're in serious we're in trouble. trouble. You know? Yeah. And you ring people and you're getting stuff in and 
During running that down time, to lodge the checks like you know, oh literally <clears throat> let's get these checks lodged now yeah. yeah when you go home and you have a conversation with your wife and she's asking you when when are you going to start making money because oh, this is getting a bit long in the yeah. tooth now yeah 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 I know you're doing a great job and you, you know you're excited well let's just pause that for a second let's just say that i don't think we would be where we are today without the support of our wives 100 percent, yeah 100 yeah. you know two great I wives massive i mean so lucky yeah. i mean yeah and that's your support system as a business owner is one of the most yeah. important things yeah because your friends will get tired of listening to you and they won't understand they don't you know the the role you have so you're working for nothing is this it tell yeah. me more yeah. Was what's would you not just get a job? Yeah, no, they, they will never fully understand as much no. as you, you talk about it. Yeah, um, your wife will have to get a you know a good understanding, yeah, and be supportive. My wife, I'd say, was my <coughs> business partner as well, my advisor, yeah, uh, and consultant and support mechanism. Like when I got home, yeah, you know, I'd offload and Annie would just be like, you know, she'd just say the right things, or you know, everything was you know, you just get home to a happy place, yeah, and I think. It just made it easier to get up the next day and get back out and do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <clears throat> Barbara's a very positive girl, and and I'm <laughs> so uh, probably you know, we wouldn't have brought it forward um, without without the two girls. No, you know, no, so definitely not. I would, I would say the same. Yeah. At home and, and no matter what the the mood was, she'd know how to lift it and change it. And yeah, I say, well, hang on. Do you remember you were only saying all this positive stuff two, three days ago? Yeah. Bring it all back. And you're like, you know what? You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put a bit yeah. of perspective on it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Let's try it tomorrow again. Yeah. Um, so mental health, right? Massive. Business owners' mental health, huge area. What can mm. you do to help it? What can a business owner do to improve mental health? We're going to talk about all that. Mm. Little things that we picked up along the way. Yeah. You know, simple little tricks. Yeah. And a lot of what we're, everything that we're going to discuss throughout this whole thing, it's not original, it's not new. We no, didn't come up with we're not concepts. reinventing the wheel here, no. This has all no. been done. We have learned a lot from great mentors along the way. We have. From audio books, from yeah. experience, yeah. and from other business owners. Traveling and across the waters, meeting yeah. big players. We went over to... Asking questions. Large competitors to get to learn some tricks over mm -hmm. there. So there's been lots of pivotal moments, and we want to relay that information. We want to help other people. We want to be able to... Yeah. Um, throw that advice out there. Some of it will stick and some of it won't. Some of it will apply to others, some of it won't. So other areas we're going to cover, right? Yeah. Hard work, resilience, persistence. What is it? How does it apply? You know? Yeah. How do you how do you keep those muscles flexed? The business plan, the pros and cons of a business plan. Is it an outdated concept? Does it work in real life? And what's the alternative? Yeah. Your personal goals. How do they tie into the business goals? So your personal goals. You are the business at the start. Your personal goals must be consistent with what's happening in the business. And it's important to write them down, timeline them, yep. and give yourself rewards along the way. Or you're doing this for nothing. Oh, you know? no, you need to do that. That's hugely important. Procrastination and perfectionism, right? So we often joke and I say, this is going to be your episode because yeah. you are the master procrastinator. Right? But I'm also the master of perfectionism. Well, that's good, right? Because this yeah. whole setup today is all your perfectionism. I, I would have had us sitting here with iPhones in, in, in their ears and just pressing the little button, you know? Cause yeah, absolutely. You'll yeah. do the research, you'll find out all the details and make it happen. Setting up all the stuff. So perfectionism, procrastination, it's great if you use it as a strength. And it's terrible if you let if you let it hold you back when it comes to decision making, time, and waiting for things to be right because there's no right time. Okay, so what's the next cover one? All that. Time, time is one of the most important things I think to talk about. Time, something that it's a commodity. You only have a certain amount of it every week, every day, and it's important that you kind of see what's the best and highest and best use of your time. I think you find a lot of people who we've come across don't really understand it and find themselves working really hard always fighting the clock and I think that's just down to the fact that maybe certain mechanisms were put in place to free them up to allow them to make the best use of their time yeah so working smart working smart as opposed to working, working hard. hard yeah I think that's our motto one of our models isn't it protecting your time yeah is something that you learn to do as you go saying no saying no Saying, not today, too yeah. busy, and the only way you can do that is by predetermining what's your priorities today or this week. Yeah. You know, my priority this week is to get five new customers, and 
you know, you get a call or somebody comes in and asks you to get involved in something or, you know, your accountant rings you and says, I need all these books done by Friday. Yeah. You can say, okay, he said so. I have to do it. I get stuck in. Or you can say, no, I have to get my five new customers because you know that that's more important. Feeding the organism, feeding the business and get that bookkeeping done on Saturday or Sunday yeah. or whatever. Protecting <coughs> your time. You know, not getting sidetracked by little things, silly things. Yeah. Not getting pulled into situations that don't really involve you. I think at the early days, I think you need to kind of focus on moving the business forward. I think if you get sidetracked. Yeah. You know, every week you need to be doing at least two to three tasks that's going to move that business forward. Yeah. You know, and that's where you kind of learn how to prioritize your tasks, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so, go on. Sorry, yeah. No, so I was just going to summarize there, <clears throat> not to get too, too mm. swept into it, but time. Sure, time, yeah. Managing your time and becoming, you know, an expert at managing your own time is what will mm. bring your business forward and help you yeah get from time management is huge yeah yeah so we're going to talk about time management and how it applies to a small business owner mm -hmm. how you can improve what habits you can create yeah. which brings us on to the power of habit as a subject because habit is everything we are creatures of habit by nature yeah and we can create our own habits we can create new habits it's all about conscious a conscious decision to do so do you know how many days it takes to become for something to become a habit? I'm gonna say eight. Twenty one. Okay. Twenty one days. Okay. After that it becomes habitual. Okay. And that yeah. came from the Power of Habit book? Yep. Okay. So that's one of the audio books we'll talk about later on. Yeah. Habit as as a a tool to change <coughs> you personally and change your business. Yeah. And for people who just might see habit as a negative word, yeah. I think discipline True. is the alternative to use there, to become disciplined. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. If you don't, I think, you know, you have to have, even though you have to be very flexible, I feel, you know, that even though you have to be disciplined, you need to have your set tasks, you also need to be flexible. So it's a juggling act. Yeah. So I think you can only be flexible if you have, if you're disciplined in your tasks and your roles, because you know what to do, when to do, how to do. But then when something comes in left field, you know that you can tackle that, but then get back into your, your discipline, your structure, your habits if you yeah. will yeah yeah good yeah okay mindset scarcity mindset versus the abundance mindset no so <laughs> this will cripple you <laughs> if you well, don't get it right when this when this mindset kind of adjustment was first put to us mm -hmm. we were of the scarcity mindset massively yeah. and we were resistant protecting everything you know we, yeah. we argued it you yeah. know and um, there's, you know, we can only do so much. There's only so many customers out there. We can't <clears> get away with charging more than 30% yeah. margin. We'll be exposed. Somebody so we didn't. We never charged more than 20%. <laughs> well, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, go on. Um, but it's very, very, you're nearly brainwashed into a scarcity mindset. You know, yeah. it's, an, it's a, a scary place to be. You don't, mm. you know, you, you can, you can only do so much. However, if you start to see that there's an abundance of opportunities. Everything changes. There's an abundance Everything of changes. learning opportunities. There's an abundance of information out there. Customers. There's, a, there's an abundance of customers. Yeah. An abundance of really good staff that mm. you can that can work for you yeah. if you do the right things. There's Absolutely. an abundance of money in the world yeah. that you can get in as capital to your business. So many people don't get that. You so, know, so many people latch on to what they have. There's an abundance of time in the time. week. Yeah. You know, I've only, you know, oh, I go to work and I go home and I get the kids to bed and that's mm. my week gone. You know, that's yeah. just mismanagement of Massively. the abundance of time. Yeah. Not to go back into the time management, not, not, but, but it's, yeah. Abundance applies to so many things. Yeah, definitely. There's an abundance of happiness and love in the world that you can have mm -hmm. in your life. You know, yes, there is. There's a lot of people there who, who are habitually living through, you know, unhappy or, you know, life's missing love and they're not taking the opportunities needed to go out and find that you know yeah so yeah. abundance as a as a mindset we're going to cover that hr hiring the right people right this is a funny subject for us because, oh and i'm God. sure all small business oh owners who have tried it because we talked to others i was only talking to a, one of the neighbors across the road um in the unit across the road last week and their, their stories were nearly matching when it really? came to yeah. the people that we've hired yeah the problems we've encountered, the surprises you get, you know, after two or three weeks when all the... I, I think there's an awful lot. Of, I think to, to 
maybe put a little synopsis on this. I think it's hiring is a case of trust and deceit. Yeah. Like that's the pitfall. Like, you know, people you're interviewing are d- aren't 100% honest with you. You know, don't go in as a French interpreter and then can't say three weeks later, listen, I can't speak a word of French. And that's what we found. Yeah. You know, you when people come across, because we're quite honest guys, Yeah. Um, I think we're very open and I think we always manage the expectation at the start. And when we were looking for certain roles, you know, I think people were desperate yeah. to get the job. So they'd kind of, those white lies weren't as, you know, small little white lies weren't yeah. as small as we thought they would be. And when it came to actually performing, no. And then you ask yourself, how did they think they were going to get through how, more yeah. than what three or four weeks yeah, of this absolutely. facade? Yeah. yeah. They distract themselves by moving your furniture around. Yeah. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> That's we won't, not we won't get one. too specific. No. <clears throat> um, but All right. until this year, yeah. we never used a recruitment agency. Oh, no. One, Big it's mistake. too expensive, yeah. right? We use their time and their poor skills to hire, you know, put up the cheapest ad possible in the cheapest on the <laughs> cheapest websites. Yeah. And as a result, we got a lot of poor quality candidates. So there's a balancing act. If you can't afford to use an agency, yeah. that's the reality. What, what do you do? What websites do you use? How do you pitch the ad? And how do you conduct that interview? And after that, how do you track them? How do you monitor somebody? So there's a lot of stuff there we'll cover. Um, we're going to talk about culture. culture. Yeah. Culture is hugely important. Yeah. So setting the culture in your yeah. business, you know, that's... That was something that I found very hard to get my head around at the very start. Yeah? Yeah. A culture. You know, I think my mindset was like, listen, you've got the job. Be thankful. Now show us what you've got. You were, and that, you were nearly a hardcore industrial kind Yeah, of. hardcore industrial style. You know, it's all about kind of, you know, you're in now. Let's see what you've got. And not taking into consideration the fact that, you know, they were spending half their lives, that was it now, half their day would be in our in our premises or our office or whatever, under our kind of watchful eye or whatever. Yeah, and it yeah. was like, and then the whole concept of making that a better place for them to come into and, and make it more relaxing and, you know, let them customize their work area and, you know, give them, let them, let's look after their lunches and make them feel, give them some autonomy and empowerment. Empowerment. Love. Uh, love. It was just, so different yeah. the whole idea was so, but then you get so much more out of people when you give them that you know Yeah. and I think that's something that we really need to we will definitely be yeah. um, elaborating on yeah. quite a lot. we've created a, a positive place to work massive yeah. and we have we promote work life balance hugely hugely I think we we, we show we, we, is the word Sean we Sean no upon like we try and that's it five o'clock is cut off for we everybody don't, yeah, we, we, don't, don't, we don't want no. people working over after their hours we don't want any we don't heroes we don't want any weekend no. work no and that's I mean that is the way forward it's just, just talk of the four day week and all that stuff yeah. I don't know if we're going to get to that anytime soon no, but no. I can see the logic in that you know yeah um, I, I actually remember well, starting I remember Anya saying she used to go uh, if you can't get your job done by five o'clock you're doing it wrong yeah <laughs> she's actually yeah. right like you yeah. know just <clears throat> it's it can be done the next day or you know you make it more efficient or whatever but yeah this crack of work until six and seven and eight o'clock getting home and your kids are going to bed. No, no definitely Never did not. It. not. It's not a healthy way of being. No. Now, we've done it here and there. I've done a few <sighs> mad evenings and all that stuff. Mm. Very, very rarely. And I think it was at the start, wasn't it? At the, During yeah, the hustle? When that was going on, well, mm. it depends. The odd time it would happen. But yeah. it would probably be, be because I took a Tuesday off and I was behind and I had a deadline of oh, some yeah. sort. You know, yeah, you'd yeah, be catching up. Yeah. I never did more than 50 hours in a week. No. And now... It's fair to say, I'd say we work, actually work 20 to 25 hours a week, yeah, maybe. I think so, yeah. You know? it's, a fair, it's a fair assessment, I think. And I'd say half of that time we're in the cafe, and the other quarter of the time we're here in the gym. This is all getting cut out. Huh? This is all getting cut out. <laughs> now, we don't work, we don't work hard, but we, we... work smart. We work smart, and we come in, and we, and we get stuff done, and we make well, key well, decisions, and yeah. we ask the team to do certain tasks and work with us. Well, let, well, let's be clear about something, though. Whether you're on, you know, the bench here or we're out having a, a coffee or I'm at home or whatever's going on, <clears throat> we have our finger on the pulse. We know everything that's going on in the yes. business. We are fully tuned in. We are having weekly strategy meetings. Yeah. It's not like, you know, we've gotten to where we are in business now and it's like, ah, we'll worry about when it happens. No. Nope. We do a lot of pre-mortems and we can talk about, I think you should put that on the list, about what, a, what yeah. a pre-mortem is versus post-mortem. And I think that 
alone has allowed us to be in the position we're yeah. in, you know? I think our heads are definitely not in the clouds. Oh, the hamster's always on the wheel, you know? Yeah, Wake always. Wake up and I check my emails. Yeah, we're always still focused. We still have that ninja kind of... It's like... We know what the company's going to look like in five yeah. years and we'll make sure it gets yeah. there. Yeah. Nothing happens that... We don't know about could be yeah that we don't know about that could be could be damaging you know you wake mm. up and you check there's only fires there that need to be put out no. exactly yeah. okay I can relax now for they're gonna have me break you know I'll drive to work and I'm gonna listen to the audiobook do and I won't think do. too much about it till I get there yeah and then we come in that's it get stuck in but that's I think that's the ultimate goal of yeah. most business owners to yeah. be able to do that not to come in and be firefighting every day yeah worrying about cash flow sales aren't coming in Oh, my, you know, some of my staff haven't showed up yeah. because you've got a poor culture in the business. Yeah, all these things that people miss. That's you know, a, that's a huge thing. We have, we don't have the absenteeism that others. We are so might lucky. We have a great team. Our team is amazing. So, we have an exceptional team. I would we say. Do. Yeah. I do, but I also think though that's a two way street. Well, I think we were lucky to find them. Yeah, and I think we've we've nourished that as well, and yeah. I think they've reciprocated with loyalty and productivity and mm. friendship. Yeah, friendship. I think we treat them all with respect and dignity and as human beings yeah. and as friends. I think you need to forget you're the business owner. And I think everybody, like yeah. when we're sitting in a room and you're asking a question, you know, you're expecting that people around have their own ideas and you can implement those ideas yeah. and make them feel kind of... Get them involved in get the decision-making. Yeah. Empower them, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's for me, that comes from being on the other end. Oh, yeah. I was me the too. employee me so too. many times and mm. I worked for so many... Terrible bosses. Terrible, draconian, old school way of things. Like. But I also worked for a couple of excellent bosses. Yeah. And you go, oh, the gap between the two is so vast. <laughs> yeah. that when you become the employer, yeah. it's great to say, right, I want to be like or as good as yeah. work towards being one of the good bosses where people go, he was good to me, you know, he yeah. was flexible. Um, I was able to discuss my personal life and my mm -hmm. personal problems. And, oh, yeah. You know, I could go home, you know, whatever. You last minute let's go you bail only, there's empathy a massive empathy there massive, you know, yeah. like you're talking to somebody else because you've built up a trust mm. and then obviously in our case sometimes you give that trust to somebody and it will go wrong because it gets abused that's where we get back to the old HR yeah, and hiring yeah <laughs> I know it's topics that you can talk so about it all day having the team that it's uh, hugely important to value the way we manage them yeah and then give it back is so great i mean i come in here every day proud and i go oh, this, man, this yeah. is a great team this is a great team these people are fantastic yeah you know? yeah how we got to that was hit and miss yeah and that's the point it's never going to be smooth but i think if you were to tie it all together and i think if you look at a journey and you look at the strategy i think regards to your team i think it's about seeing where your business is in five years and being able to break that into small pieces and seeing well what's the, who's the next member of the team we need yeah and then picking that right person and then treating them with a level of respect and, you know, giving them the empathy, giving them the freedom that they need within their role to stay and to, to, to build that role that around them and then to go and get the next one yeah. and then build a team. You know yeah. what I mean? And by the, by the time you get to the end of it, you've got a full level of empowerment and autonomy, but also with certain level of management, which is nearly two-way, they manage us as much as we manage yeah, them. Yeah. And I think that's hugely important when yeah. they manage upwards. You have to give people more credit. Oh, massively, Than they would yeah. have got traditionally, you know. Yeah. Um, the guys who work for us, they know their jobs better than we know them jobs. You know I mean? I've done all the jobs. I've been the bookkeeper. <laughs> I've been the customer service guy. I've been the sales guy. Uh, you We've, know what? I, I actually still feel awkward now when I'm asking a question where I'm like, I shouldn't know the answer to this. Yeah, yeah. So, and like I'm going, you know, yeah. I won't get specific, but I'm asking questions and I'm like, if I'm thinking to myself, if you ask this question, you know, yeah. they're going to go, hang on a minute. You're, you're risking your credibility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's supposed to How know. do we do this again? <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to know that. Well, that's a good sign. But you forget stuff. But that's a good you sign. Know? That means you It's a long time since I did a bank wreck. Yeah. You know, so mm. that's a great thing. Big time. You know, so sometimes yeah. you forget little things. However, yeah. you get back into it quick enough mm. when the shit hits the fan, if you need yeah. to. Yeah, 100%. Um, okay. So... We're getting towards the end, right? We're, we've given a good idea of what we're going to be covering. Um, I mean, there's going to be other elements. We haven't discussed, sorry, financial. Let me just throw that in there, right? So I've done most of the financial stuff yeah. in the business over the years. So yeah. Not to put a tag on it, but uh, I suppose financial controller is an element of, of what I do now as the director. And over the years, managing cash flow it has been so important. So the cash flow, I would say, is the blood of the business. Oh, 100%. To go back yeah. to the analogy of the body. 
cash flow has to flow through the business. There has mm. to be a constant um, movement and there has to always be a healthy amount of good cash flow. Mm. So we've been on the back foot so many times in the early years and yeah. then luckily we made some profits and we were able to have a healthy cash flow. Yeah. We've grown our business organically. Organically, which debt is free. Which worth point, pointing out. Yeah. Does, it's all been done through the cash flow mm. and that takes day-to-day -day analysis Does, and yeah. projections. Micromanagement. What micro is going to be in the bank next week? Yeah. Who are we paying at the end of this month? Mm. And where's that money going to come from? Yeah. Right, so part of that, we're going to have a, probably more than one episode on different elements of the financial parts of the business. Cash flow and credit control is yeah. one, right? So I have I did credit control for many years. I know how to effectively get money from creditors without upsetting anybody. And uh, upsetting some people, of course. The Mankini. There's a f well, we'll talk about that. We will. We won't get into it no, today. No, no, But we will. <laughs> I don't have it with me, but... <laughs> I could put it. I could put it on in later episodes to demonstrate. Anyway, you don't want the man in a mankini coming in looking for money. If you run an office that has customers at a retail front on a, on a shop front, yeah, you know, because yeah. what's going on here? But it's an effective tool to get paid. Let's just say right? you got paid. Yeah. yeah. So we got paid. Anyway. Anyway, we'll I've, talk about that. I, I have. There's lots of tricks to credit control, and I'd like to. I'd like to share them with. Uh, hey. The, yeah the listeners and again and again like i mean how many people who are going to have to start their own business now have come out of college i wouldn't say there's a lot i think an entrep i don't think entrepreneurial people are college you know educated yeah. some are S some are but i think you know a lot of guys will just get the idea and want to run with it yeah so i think with likes of finance and stuff that's such a very technical thing that needs to be understanding in profit and loss yeah understanding your balance sheet like how many times have you watched the dragon's den Yes. Yeah, and they give this amazing pitch and it's really well thought out and the whole lot. And then they start talking about the numbers. Yeah. So what tell me what's your profit for the next or what's your margin for the next? You, or what's your gross profit? Yeah, mad figures. But they don't even know what that is. Yeah. Like they're going, uh, well I expect to turn and they're getting confused between turnover and gross yeah. profit and overheads and it lets yeah. them down. That's part of understanding finance as yeah. well. You know, so we're not going to be giving finance lessons no. in, in that depth. No, but no, no. There's lots of key things you can do, and yeah. we might give guidance on things you should learn, things you should educate yeah. yourself on, yeah. and what sort of figures do you need to look at Pitfalls. every week and every month. Yeah, yeah. How not to lose customers by being over hasty in credit control because that's where it, there's a conflict of interest. One yeah. day I'm selling to you, I'm trying to open the account, and in three weeks I'm ringing you for money, yeah. and you don't have it. Yeah. Now I'm in a tight spot. What do I say? Yeah, definitely. You need to pay me. Or mm. I say, you know, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you another few weeks. But like we, 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 we were given credit at the very start when we didn't have credit to give. Yeah. You know, like that's, you know, it was a bold move, but yeah. it worked like, you know. Yeah. And, and in a lot of industries, you have to give credit, you know. Yeah. Business yeah. to business. You're business to credit. business, yeah. Um, B2C, you, you know, you can get payment up front. In mm. a lot of cases, it can be, it can be easier to yeah. manage your cash flow. Yeah. Um, knowing your numbers, right? So that's the whole financial end. It's going to be, we're going to cover quite yeah. a few different elements in yeah. there. Leadership, we're going to talk about customer service, right? So there's a huge world that we could talk about in customer service. Massive. It's the new battlefield. We'll that's talk about, I suppose, the, we're going to get into the basics of customer is king, customer is always right, crowning yeah. your customer. What sort of audiobooks are going to give you the key mm -hmm. tools in there for? Well, I think it's important to mention that we are going to be talking about audiobooks. We're going to be recommending yeah. different audiobooks based on the subject matter of that episode. Yeah. And we can review it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, probably an audiobook per episode. Probably. Yeah. Probably, yeah. And we will discuss the key elements of each one. Yeah. And um, there's been so many audiobooks. There's probably, probably less than 10 that would be the... The really important ones. Yeah, the really, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I think, I don't know if you've come across. I'm sure you have as well. Where you see a lot of guys and they're listening to all these self-proclaimed gurus about how to build a business in 18 months. Yeah, multi-million, all this type of carry on, and they've been sucked in by all this type of, I think, false. Uh, I think it's a spin. You know, well, it's a it's a business in itself. It's a business in it's itself. Fun. That's the problem. Yeah, and I think, I think. It's very misleading. Yeah. I don't think you can 
unless you're a tech company yeah. and you're going to get a lot of investors to throw millions at it from, a, from a, an SME, from a small business, yeah. you know, it takes three, four, five, six years, you know, and I yeah. think those audiobooks will help you to yeah. piece it all together and set out a, a roadmap on how to actually build yeah. a strong uh, company with longevity and build a team and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's important. Yeah, it sure is. I mean, we're, we're talking about helping people who don't have an investor. You don't have... Yeah. Uh, Cash flow, you know, you're starting with zero, you know, really. Y- Small amount. Nobody's money. throwing money into this. No, um, you've no customers. Yeah. You know, sink or swim. There's no, uh, there's no big bank loan to start. I mean, some if there is, that's great. You Brilliant, know, yeah. and you can, there's certain it's businesses where you need certain things to start. You know, yeah. So, there's certain businesses where you have to have stock at the beginning. Mm-hmm. You know, certain businesses where you have to have a decent premises. You have to have machinery. You have to be maybe it's manufacturing. Yeah, that's where your investors yeah. kick in. I don't think that's a small business. You know, that could be a loan or whatever. But, yeah. Um, the same principles will apply. Yeah. So. Where were we? Customer service, audiobooks. Yeah, we're going to be covering a lot customer of Customer service, yeah. Hugely so, important. Yeah. Listen to your customers. I think it's fair to say most of these topics are going to be hugely important. They're all important. They're course, all yeah. vital pieces of a cog yeah. of an engine that's going to... If, uh, like, if uh, back to the analogy, the, the business as um, a functioning body, the, the senses, the sense organs mm. are picking up signs from the outside world mm-hmm. smell sight yeah. hearing your customer service team or function yeah is like the senses it's listening to what's happening with the customers yeah seeing things happening in the world and getting a smell is this smell all right is this smell dodgy yeah. what do i need to do mm. so your customer service is your your senses nearly putting a structure in place it's something that evolves over time mm. we're going to talk about that yeah, structure well, is important. Who's the first person you employ? Mm. What do they do? Yeah. You know? What does that look like? Yeah. When do you stop outsourcing the IT department? When do you stop outsourcing HR? When do you bring this stuff in-house? Or should you ever? Should you ever do yeah, it? Yeah, you know, it depends. Mm. Um, putting processes in place. Map, mapping out processes, keeping them simple in a way that everybody understands. Um, so... The body and the brain as the manager is a two-way system. It's constantly getting messages yeah. to and from. The processes are the pathways. What yeah. are the processes? You know, what's yeah. what's gonna make this run smoothly? And if you're not there, which you don't plan on being, you know, you wanna you wanna start enjoying life, you're the business owner, you wanna finish early, you wanna go and play ten years in now, let's be clear about this. Yeah. <laughs> this you, isn't or eleven years know, in. This is you isn't wanna start playing golf. Year three or year four. You wanna take an extended holiday for yeah. three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, you wanna take that trip of a lifetime. Yeah. You want to buy your second home down the country and be able to go down there and switch off. You have to have processes in place. Yeah. When you're not there, the team say, Okay, we know the process here. We don't need Stephen or Paddy here. No, today. we know what to do. We know what to do because it's been clearly yeah. defined. Yep. So putting processes in place is is hugely important. Um. So I think that's that's a good summary of what we're going to be doing over the next year. And yeah. We would encourage anybody who who thinks that this would be helpful to follow on social media. Um. Yep. Subscribe to the YouTube. The YouTube. YouTube. And uh, describe to the Facebook. <laughs> YouTube channel and Spotify and uh, Facebook. Follow us anyway. Get involved. And yeah. we, we have a, a website, yeah. which is the Business Fitness Podcast. Ie. Very good. And we have an email address for anybody who has any questions yes, or suggestions. Absolutely. Or, yeah. At hello at the Business Fitness Podcast. Ie. At hello. That's two oh, ads. Sorry. Hello. Hello. At. Yes. Hello at Hola. the Business fitness podcast.ie so yeah. are we going to have guests we are going to have guests okay. we are going to be um over the next 24 episodes we're going to have um other business owners of different industries yeah some are digital marketing some will be retail some will be you know just quite a broad spectrum okay so with similar stories of, similar of, stories they'll have their own story yeah. we'll be asking them questions about how they got to where they are so what were the pitfalls? What were their big wins? You know, what? how did they find you Most know, their Most important journey? lessons along the way. Most important lessons and, you know, to share that with everybody else. I think that's hugely important. Yeah, okay. So that'll be interesting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, we're also going to have maybe some exercises during some of the episodes, you know, 
something that I don't mean, you know, exercises. No, not exercises. Mental Steven. exercises. Yeah. Write down your Tasks. goals for the next yeah. two months and mm. all that stuff. You know, what are your five key selling points? So? What do you want your business to look like in three years' time? Yeah, things like that. So we're going to have a couple of exercises, homework for the homework for the listeners. Yes, and it's crucial that you you would go and do those things if you want yeah. to to bring the business forward. Yeah. Um, let me just check my notes, make sure we're covering everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's uh, cool. A good, a good overview of what we're doing. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, so thanks everybody for listening and for watching. Yeah, thank you. Hope you've enjoyed the introductory episode. Rough, and but we're getting there. Ah, oh, it's a first for everything, and I you think know, we did okay. It's all about just trying new things for yeah. us, and just an experiment, and you know, we we just. It was a whim, an idea. Throw it out there. Let's see what happens. Might help somebody, might not. And um, that's it. That's it. Over and out. Thank you Over very much. Over and out, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Take care. Bye-bye.